All right, YouTube, I've touched on this subject before, but I didn't actually, I looked back through the occult playlist and I hadn't made a video specifically on this one sole topic, and that's that black and white magic don't exist. The terms are useless, essentially, within the realm of actual occultism. Uh, when people say white magic or black magic, what it connotates is simply the same cosmic or divine or mystic force used for different purposes. That is, that it's completely dependent upon man's interpretation of good and evil. What's the problem here? What one culture sees as good and evil is completely different from what another culture sees as. For instance, you might have a, a sort of religious body that thinks that if you're like healing people and you're not doing it through a specific style of invocation, like a, a Catholic prayer or something, that it's an evil occult force. It's automatically like spooky dooky cauldrons and black cat stuff. Even though, you know, some other group might not have a problem, they would class it as white magic. They'd say, no, if it's only if you're hurting people that it's black. And then another group of people might say, well, it's okay to hurt people, and it can still kind of be white magic, as long as they sort of deserve it. You know, you kill some shit fuck with a curse, that's okay, that doesn't count. It's, you shouldn't go after, like, innocent people because of the law of karma or something like that. And so the very term begins to break down and become simply just subjective labels that are applied by different cultures to different kinds of occultism. One culture might say all, you know, all forms of magic, you know, however, again, you classify that. Uh, and it depends on who you ask, I suppose, the Crowley definition or sort of the medieval definition given by Christians or the Islamic definition or the Jewish mysticism definition they'd see as like you know, pagan rituals, that's like witchery, that's evil. But if it's Jewish mysticism like Kabbalah, that's okay. And it's simply, it's all confused. It no longer makes sense. What I say is that magic is magic. Uh, if you believe in it or not, it, it doesn't really matter. We can argue over the finer points of the existence of occultism as variously defined. But the principle, the, the philosophical principle of those practices is not, should not be subjected to human reason in the sense of the cultural. That is, magic can certainly be cultural. One group is conducting, you know, this group of people has the corn dance ritual, you know, to make their, their corn grow taller. And that one has their, their bison ritual to make, make the buffaloes come so they can have a better hunt. And this group of people has the frog ritual to keep, like, the rain of frogs away because they had that problem, like, a few generations ago and they, like, dance around with frog masks on or something. And so on and so on forth. They have their different practices. They have their different categories of magic. They have different writings on magic. It even changes from, like, era to era. Even within one culture, like, the way in which occultism was generally viewed by people at the turn of the 20th century, you know, the sort of the theosophy, the Blavatsky and Crowley era, is totally different from the way a lot of people practice it now, even within the same cultures, you know, you think of the US, the UK, you know, Western Europe or whatever, it's completely and utterly different. The terms don't mean anything though. There's no such thing as white magic or black magic. There's simply magic. Um, it's simply occultism, the mystic, the unexplained, you could term it, the, uh, forces as yet not quantified by science, forces maybe never quantifiable by science, some divine explanation might be used, a cosmic, a celestial explanation, all of the above, some of the above, none of the above. There are a million ways to explain it. That doesn't really ultimately make any difference. The difference is that because one person and one other person don't see the same things uh, absolutely or situationally as evil or good in any strict definition. Some people don't even have a concept, you know, like a psychopath, they don't necessarily have what you would consider a standard definition of the two. Um, because of that subjectivity, it doesn't make any sense really to label things. If a European or an American labels tries to categorize what magic constitutes you know, good or white or okay magic and what's black magic, what's evil, accursed and forbidden, uh, they're going to come up with a totally different categorization than if I ask somebody from the middle of the Sudan, or if I ask somebody from, uh, from Korean culture, or somebody living in, in some remote South Pacific island. They're all going to create a different categorization system, even if this, the magic, the rituals, the names, the content, the, the general concept is exactly the same. They'll categorize them differently. 
So then it simply becomes semantics. Who do we trust to categorize these systems? Generally, people have an understanding of such a thing from a European perspective. If, if you're reading something in English, it's a European perspective you're getting, generally speaking. If you're like a native African looking up Satanism or something, I've, I've had a lot of people, especially from the Ivory Coast, not the country, but the region, like Nigeria, Ghana, and so forth, ask me about Satanism, a lot about curses and how to summon Satan and how to sell your soul and stuff like this. It's like there's something deeper ingrained into the culture going on with the Christian devil, I guess. Like maybe it's not seen as quite as negative as in like parts of Europe or the U.S. or whatever. Uh, but their explanation of magic, there, there's obviously a difference in opinion. They're, they're taking Satan literally, number one. Number two, they're looking at it as a corporeal entity that can be like seen, actually physically summoned and so forth, and be used for what they, I guess, consider a good purpose. Now you ask some pious Catholic from Ireland or something if that's acceptable. No, they're going to say that's evil black magic. It can never be done. It's absolutely forbidden. You go to hell if you do it. And yet some Christian in Nigeria is asking me how to summon the devil. Um, so there are differences between these cultures because the labels applied. When we talk about white or black magic or gray magic or good or evil or whatever, because they're so subjective, because they're, it's just human interpretation, it's just human understanding, why use those labels if you're trying to build? a sort of categorical system, if you categorize it all, of magic, and you're trying to determine what's good, what's evil, what's, I guess, in the middle or whatever, are there shades of gray or not, some are more absolutist than others, it doesn't make sense to really even bother to do that, especially on a cultural basis. I simply say magic is magic is magic. The occult is the occult. The mystic is the mystic. Doesn't matter. The purposes may be different. Ultimately, though, um, if you're looking at it from a more secular perspective, these are just phenomena as yet to be explained by science. That is, they're understood within secularity. Well, there's no objective moral within secularity necessarily, unless you're going by like a biological definition. It's good if it creates and maintains life. It's evil if it prevents reproduction or prevents life or something like that. I guess you could use that explanation. If you're looking at it from a religious perspective, like a Christian or an Islamic background, you're going to have your own feeling about what constitutes acceptable and unacceptable occultism. Like a Christian sees praying to Jehovah, that's acceptable, but it's still magic. It's still an invocation. It's still a sort of, it's calling on a divine, a cosmic power. It's still magic, as properly understood. It's still occultism. It's just an acceptable form because it happens to be a, to a deity or being or whatever you want to call it, or to an angel or a saint or something that you find acceptable and you're using it for a, a good purpose, so-called. Somebody else may think that's pure evil. Somebody may think that uh, you could imagine a culture that thinks it's evil to heal the sick because they think, well, if they got sick, they must have done something wrong to deserve it. Or if they got sick, they're weak, and we don't want weaklings. We're, we're a strong people. Strength is good, and, and weakness is bad or something. You could have all of these different opinions. Magic is simply magic, whatever its source. And again, we can have a debate over it. I've got my own feelings. Many others have different feelings for myself. Some have the same. Some overlap to a degree or a greater or lesser degree. But it's still just occultism, using the term white magic, black magic, good and evil, to denote something that you don't even necessarily admittedly fully understand, I think is a little bit of a mistake. It really becomes confusing. It makes it harder for you to perform magic if that's the sort of thing that you're into. If you're into occult practice and you're constantly second-guessing and trying to categorize things according to some subjective system, especially if you've been an Abrahamist and you're still dragging that into it saying, well, I do no harm and so forth, uh, then it's going to be very difficult for you to appreciate the finer aspects of a lot of types of occultism, especially from areas that weren't really touched by Christianity, places where it never became prevalent or never arrived in the fucking first place. You know, you think of some remote half-contacted tribe that rejected the first missionaries they found and beat their skulls flat with rock hammers. Um, they're going to have a different view of the spiritual than the missionary that got his skull beat flat, like a potato pancake. So yeah, I don't believe in using such labels for magic. Uh, I've said it before, I've talked about it I think twice or maybe three times in past videos, but it needed its own video. It has to be explained once and for all for people to know. Um, within the occult, there's really no such categorization to be made. If you want to look at all versions of occultism, study them all, appreciate them all, you, know, you don't have to actually practice them, but if you want to have an appreciation, you can't go in 
uh, judging every ritual from your own, you know, bias, essentially. You just, you really can't do that. I've looked at Christian occultism, too. I have no problem with it. You know, maybe not my thing, but at the same time, I'm not going to drag my bias and say, well, this deals with Jehovah, so it's just white, fluffy stuff, because that's not the way to operate. If you want a truly unbiased account of the mystic, of the not quite explained world within the realm of occultism, within the realm of the divine. That's about all. Peace out.